สวัสดีค่ะ My name is D from Miss Sniff and Snitch Channel right here on YouTube and on Instagram. I'm from Thailand, so I usually uh, do my reviews in Thai. Once in a while, I um, made one in English, like the essence of Thailand, where I talked about the perfumes that represent my country, uh, geography, people, culture, landscape, food. And this one, I would like to talk about the uh, Thai perfumers and the perfumes that have made it into the world. I still don't know how to edit a video, so I'm gonna do this in one shot as always. If I make any mistakes, please forgive me. And if it gets too boring, please forgive me. And I hope you subscribe on my channel because I try to do it in both languages in the future. So talk about Thai perfumers and Thai perfumes. I'm so addicted to this house lately. The house is Dusita, and the uh, perfume that I'm so in love with it lately is Moonlight in Chiang Mai. So pretty. Now let me tell you the story about uh, Dusita House. Last year, I won a discovery set from her, and um, I wrote a review about this brand. And when I write a review in Thai, I usually am blunt and straightforward. So I say I love everything about her. I love, love, love all her style, the mood and the tone, and the colors and the scents. They were very, very pretty and represent Thailand very well. Uh, Melody de la Mor, uh, La Duceur de Siam, Fleur de la Lita, Pavilion Door. And also the masculine side, like it's Sarah, Erewhon, or Ud, Infini. I love all of them, but it would be very hard for me to buy a full bottle because they're so expensive and they don't last, they don't project. So that's it, right? Few days later, I received a phone call from Paris. It was from Kumploi Pissara herself telling me like, Oh, thank you so much for trying my uh, fragrances and uh, thank you for writing a review. And I was so embarrassed and so shocked and I, I felt so bad. You know, instead of being grateful, I wrote a review about her perfumes and the performance. I felt so bad, you know, I told her like, sorry, but you know, your, your stuff are very nice. It just doesn't last on my skin or it doesn't project at all. So that's it. Last month, no, few months, After that, she came out with this one with Moonlight in Chiang Mai. So I wrote on someone Instagram and say that I, I would love to try this scent. And then she saw it. She emailed it to me. She said, I'm going to send you something to try along with your shoes, whatever scent you want. So I told her, yeah, I love Fleur de Lita um, and Melody de L'Amour. La so she sent me the package. And I thought she would send me like a tiny vial. Nope, she sent me a full 50 ml bottle of this one and when I first open it I smell the cap Baccarat Rouge oh my goodness holy shit I hate Baccarat Rouge sorry for the fan but I cannot take it and I thought wow here comes the problem but when I spray this on it's gorgeous all the way so I spray about two, three on, and I went to walk with my kids on the beach, and I kept smelling myself, and I feel my own aura, and I felt so pretty and sensual, because moonlight in Chiang Mai opens up with something bitter. Uh, it has yuzu, but it's not your typical kind of yuzu. It's bitter yuzu, mixing with jasmine, also nutmeg, so it just, It felt so right, you know, it's different than any other thing I have in my collection. Also, uh, it has patchouli, vetiver, uh, Siamese benzoin, which is different from any kind of benzoin. Uh, and one keynote is Thai teak wood. Since the name is called Moonlight in Chiang Mai, Chiang Mai is the northern uh, city in Thailand. It's the largest northern city in Thailand. 
So uh, they produces a lot of teak wood that, that represents the scent very well. I love it there so much. It's beautiful and full of nature and culture. People are very nice, very kind. They speak slow comparing to us Southerners. They're lovely and they, um, they have a, a lot of traditions and festivals. Uh, Kun Ploy, when she created this, she said it, she wanted something to remind her of home of Thailand and uh, her trip to the north in particular. So moonlight in Chiang Mai is about the nighttime in Chiang Mai, especially in Loi Katong or like the Thanksgiving time that we, um, we offer flowers and we put candle joysticks, uh, pieces of hair or fingernails, you know, something that to float to the river, like these are the bad luck part and we hope for the better year for the next year. But recently, we don't do that much because that creates pollution. We also float the lantern up to the sky and it, the whole city looks so beautiful and so calm, yet so festive. So she wants this to represent that and I think she did it so well because it smells so exotic and woody and sensual, feminine, with a little bit of masculine side. It's not like all the way floral and um, I love it so much and this one comparing to the one I wrote about last long time and projects much better for Kun Ploy Pisarat. She did not like get mad at me not only she did not get mad at me she, she took the critic criticism and she made it better and she created this one and it became like an instant hit for me I already ordered a second bottle because it's just it's just too pretty not to own two bottles. It just represents Thailand very well. So I'm thankful for that. Now, another Thai perfumer that um, make the perfumes that different from Kun Ploy, totally different is Brin. Brin Lom Rose. He has this perfume called Mandadori. It's, oh no. <laughs> anyway, okay, you, you know the bottle, right? Uh, it's Monto. Uh, the older one, the name was Mora from Bing Parfum. And now it's a bit, a bit, a bit, tiny bit reformulated. Um, it came out in 2019. I love it so much. The name is Monto or Mandadori, Monto in Thai. She's a female character in one of our epic stories. She is the mother of the lead character. The story is about two tribes fighting against, against each other for a woman. You know, any country has that kind of story. Anyway, she was born in like a nice family. She's pretty. She's from the royal court. Her, her life should be good. But then she got married and then she got kidnapped and raped by a monkey who disguised himself as her husband. And then she lost her kids and then her story just disappeared. Now Bryn, an artist himself, want to capture all of that in one bottle. So he made Monto with um, many different kind of notes that you could imagine. It's his style anyway. When he makes perfume, he always creative. I talked about it in the last video. Uh, I talked about salted green mango, which I love so much as well. Mmm. It opens very um, uh, metallic, I think, to my nose. Um, this one has a lot of floral notes, but it's not your typical kind of floral note. I know it has tuberose and um, champaka and uh, frangipani. I smell liang liang. I wrote a review in Thai again about it and I said, I, I smell this, but I didn't find it in the note. So he emailed me back and said, of course it has liang liang in it. But the interesting part is that it has coffee notes, ashes note, opium, leather, aldehyde, tobacco, um, uh, leather I say already, civet of course because it's very animalic. It also has Thai teak wood. This is very dark and magical. 
magical in terms of like voodoo magic. I, I feel like um, a femme fatale wearing this one, a mean, strong, dark woman. When I walk around the property, people always uh, ask me like, what is this? Because it smells like flowers mixing with dirt soil. I agree, it smells like that, but it's just exotic and very interesting perfume. If you wanna try something from Brin, he usually makes something like this anyway, animalic and dark and fun, something you always wonder, what is this? And very powerful. Now, this scent is very uh, powerful and lasts very long time. So, you know, for 30 mil, it might be expensive, but I think it's worth it. I love it. Um, if this represents flowers by night, this one, Fleur de Lune, represents Thai flowers by day. Even though the name is like the moon flower, but I think this is more like um, light and and pretty in white. This like black dress. But I would like to talk more about his perfume. This is from Strangers Perfumeries Correct Collection from uh, Brin Lomrose. Rose. That's, this is another line of him. I would like to talk about the caffeine honey because enough about white floral. I love white floral, but this one is very interesting as well. Uh, caffeine honey. Now, if you see the bottle and if you just smell the cap, ooh, sweet. I mean, that's the only thing I can smell. Honey, um, popcorn, caramel, but when you spray this one, the first sniff is very bitter, very dark, and also uh, boozy because I think it has some uh, cognac note, uh, tobacco and black coffee. But it's very solid coffee perfume that doesn't make you feel like you wear coffee all day because it has more notes in it. That makes this perfume interesting. I love this one so much and I wear it a lot as well. It reminds me of like my time in other places be uh, besides Thailand. Actually, it's, it smells like some, it smells more like you're sitting at the cafe in Paris or in Barcelona. That's why I like uh, Brin Lomrose because he always bring you to different places in the world, but he still use a lot of Thai ingredients. That's the beauty part about it. And the last one, I, the last perfumer I would like to talk about is uh, Bonikov. Now Bonikov, is he Thai? No. Dimitri Bonikov is not Thai, but the fact the factory uh, based here in Thailand and use a lot of Thai ingredients. When I first went on Facebook, I saw he was talking about, oh, we just walk around the market, try to find the local uh, flowers to produce our new scent. And I thought, oh, wow, lotus flowers in Thai wet market in the morning, Thai flower market in the morning. That caught my eyes. So I read the story, no, this guy is not Thai, but he makes uh, all the beautiful perfumes the first one I tried was Triad, uh, the rose perfume that I never had experience with rose perfume like that before. Very interesting, full of oud. I think uh, Bonikov um, is famous for the oud here in Southeast Asia, but um, I bought amber. <laughs> the amber cologne is not amberish at all. You see the, um, the cap? It's wood, and now the new scents, I and mean, he tried to make it like Roja. I like the old one better. So if you listen to me, then maybe you go back to make it like the old wooden cap. Anyway, amber cologne is not amberish, but it's very citrusy. It's, it just opened with a pink grapefruit, white grapefruit, uh, bergamot, bergamot orange, lime, everything together. It's just so fresh, so perfect for the heat here. And I thought, wow, he understands. Now he understands like our geography. But the interesting part about this, it has a um, tiny bit of wood with ambergris. So it's very breezy. Um, 
For the expensive price, it doesn't project. It's a skin scent. It's all natural. You, you feel good when you wear this one, but it's, you just smell yourself. I don't think anyone else can smell you. And it sticks to the skin forever. Beautiful scent. All right, so all my three perfumers from Thailand. I hope you like this one and I will learn how to edit the video so I can make it better than this. But please don't give up on me and if you like it, subscribe and I hope you try uh, the perfumes from Thailand or uh, you know, try the perfumes that made by the perfumers of Thailand, Dusikta, Brin or Bonnikov. Okay, have a nice day. Bye. สวัสดีค่ะ